Hi, welcome back to the Backpacker Coach. Today I have another special episode of Chris Creamer's and Lisanne Froon, The Girls Missing from Panama. Uh, pardon the crazy bird that's in the background. Anyway, um, for um, this video, we're going to go in depth into the night photos and kind of go down each rabbit hole of the different theories and whether they're possible, whether they're not possible, and what's kind of wrong with the different um, possibilities or different theories of, of the night photos. So let's get into this and here we go. So I wanted to go over the official narrative and then go over the pictures and see what the differences are between the two. So the official narrative of the girls is saying that they, at some point, got to a monkey bridge and they crossed the monkey bridge and then they fell off. So there's a lot of problems with that theory. I thought we'd look into the pictures and see what they say first. The first thing that I wanted to mention was the SOS. Now you can see the S pretty clear here and a part of the O and you can see the little mirror that's probably from a Pringles can and you can see the backpack strap. Now usually when people set up an SOS that usually means that is where they're going to stay. They don't usually venture far from that or they probably won't move on from that. Now that is kind of interesting, being that they would have had to move on from that. Now, obviously, one of the problems with this is that the SOS, it is kind of small. Usually you try to, like, you know, make SOS much bigger, but I guess that's all they had. A fair argument, but it's not a great argument. But I think really the bigger argument is the stick with the little tiny pieces of plastic on it. So if somebody really was stuck and they couldn't move, they were at the spot and they couldn't move, and they used this stick with the little tiny pieces of plastic to be able to signal or wanted to be able to signal somebody. So there's, I guess you could say there's two reasons for that, or maybe you could have three, but the first one, let's say that they couldn't move. So if you can't move, or can't move very far, at least one of them, is you need to be able to signal somebody by showing where you are felt like they were too too far down. So this is more of a question about the little pieces of plastic, but why did they break up the plastic bag if you wanted to be able to have a large, you know, a red bag over a stick and be able to wave it in the air, you would have you know, it's a good size, you know, bag. It's, you know, 12 inches by 12 inches, say. And so if you were able to stick it over a stick, then you'd have quite the beacon to be able to wave around. So why would somebody just rip little tiny pieces of this bag and stick it on a stick? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense because, like I was saying, if you have a nice big gigantic bag, it would show much better than a couple of little tiny pieces. That could also mean that maybe they weren't using it for what we think. Maybe it was for something else. Um, maybe, you know, possibility of maybe they wanted to catch rainwater. But then again, you still would want to have the whole full bag sitting out there and not little tiny pieces of, of plastic. And uh, like somebody had done research, they figure that those are only about four inches big. If that's true... I mean, they're pretty small and they do look, you know, they look pretty small. Now, here's the next problem. In the original narrative, they say that they fell off a monkey bridge a few days later. Now, here's the problem. If you're stuck here, wherever it is, you're not going to move. How is it that they're going to get up, still be alive for three more days, move somewhere else to find a monkey bridge, and then being hurt, probably say if they have a broken ankle or broken leg or something, you're going to tell me that they're going to cross a monkey bridge with being barely able to walk? That doesn't seem very likely at all. But there's another couple other things um, to mention about this issue. The first one is that if they did walk for wander around the jungle, 
for 11 days and they found a monkey bridge, why didn't they just sit down and wait for somebody to rescue them? I mean, that's one of the main things that rescuers always tell people, don't move around. Now, that can always depend a little bit on maybe your situation, but generally speaking, when you're lost, they say, hug a tree. And what that means is, is you do not move. The more you move, the harder you are to find and the harder you are not able to track you. And so here's the next interesting issue about this, this collage of photos. This has to do with more of the flash and how it was used or why it was used. So think about this for a second. They set this up, an SOS and a mirror. You're going to be using an SOS and a mirror during the day, number one, when it's light, as well as it's highly unlikely that they would have created this at night. So they were probably already at this place during the day. If they were at this place during the day, there's no reason for them to be taking pictures at one o'clock in the morning to try to figure out what's going on around them because they've already been there. And we don't even know how long they've been here. They could have been there, you know, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. We don't know. Knowing that they were at least here during the night and probably the day before, because they have, they set up this SOS and the mirror thing, and also saying that they set up that for probably the next day, because then you have something to be able to signal. Why would you go away from that area? That makes no sense. One of the other interesting things is why don't we see any pictures of this during the day? There's no real reason for that. If they were stuck there during the day, you would think that there would be possibly some pictures. Why would they take pictures at one o'clock in the morning throughout the night? That doesn't make a lot of sense. As well as I was talking about before, if you're under this overhang here and you hang out underneath that overhang, you would be trying to stay, you know, stay dry, stay warm, snuggling with that person. And also remember that this is, you know, day eight. They more than likely don't have any food. If they're drinking any water, they're drinking the river water, which is not very good because it has, you know, obviously lots of giardia in it. And so that's going to give you diarrhea, which makes you even more dehydrated. Also remember that food is very important because it helps you stay warm and so you're going to be also having a hard time staying warm after like eight days of being uh, in the jungle so that's another very big problem is just the fact that even if they were alive for that long which i seriously doubt that they would have survived um, one of the other interesting aspects of this is when you usually get lost the biggest issue is not usually food or water. It's usually you are killed by exposure. That is one of the main things of getting lost by. People can usually find water. You can live without food for, you know, a very long time, for like 30 days. If you are not sheltered, if you are not able to keep yourself dry, or you're not able to keep yourself warm, it's game over. And that's one of those things that doesn't make any sense on top of it was if you would be trying to stay dry why would all of a sudden in the middle of the night in a rainstorm would you try to take a bunch of pictures you'd be trying to stay as dry as possible and if you go by the timing of the phones they still would have been alive for still several other days because this was day eight and they still their phones stopped or were shut off on day 11, but they were shut off. Uh, at least one of them was. There just seems to be some very odd things that don't make a lot of sense with the night pictures. And that's why I just wanted to kind of bring up some of those issues. Also, another interesting thing is that you always hear people all the time saying that the girls were scared and they were trying to, you know, use the flash to either scare away something or to see what's going on. Well, both of those things don't seem to make a lot of sense for a couple reasons. One, this was day eight. If they were truly scared, which I'm sure anybody would be, 
in the jungle at night, why didn't they do that on day one, or day two, or day three, or day four, or day five, day six, day seven? Does that make any sense that all of a sudden on day eight, they decide, oh, I'm scared. I'm going to use the flash to see what's around me all of a sudden. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, and then the other interesting thing about this scenario is that everybody's always been saying, oh, they were using the flash to be able to see what they were, what was around them. Well, that actually didn't work because these pictures that we have here, most of them have been edited. We've lightened them up so we can actually see what's actually in the picture. But if you actually look at the original pictures, like these, these, all of these pictures are all very dark. You can't actually see anything. There's nothing there. So that pretty much rules out that they were trying to see, use the flash to be able to see. Also, if you've ever tried taking a flash at night, all you get is a big, extremely fast, bright light. Pretty much all you do is get blinded for a second, and then it takes your eyes a little while to adjust. So they weren't actually using the flash as a lighting device, because that doesn't work. And they weren't looking at the camera to actually figure out what's going on, because almost all the pictures were dark, all except for these few that we have on the top and bottom here for the most part. So that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense either. All right, so there's uh, also one more interesting scenario that I just thought of that also is kind of interesting. If you just give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they were at a monkey bridge on this day, that this is somehow a monkey bridge. So that would mean that they were here for the eighth day, the ninth day, and the 10th day and the 11th day, they decided, well, being that nobody showed up, which we'll go over that in a second, we're going to cross this monkey bridge, even though I have a broken leg. Now, there's the other problem that I just said. The, the Dutch rescue team with all the dogs and stuff, they started looking for people on April 7th. So probably 7th, 8th, 9th, somewhere in that area. I would assume they probably were doing that for probably several days, I would guess. They were looking for the girls. Now, if they were looking for the girls, the 7th and 8th and 9th, and if this picture is true and they're at a monkey bridge and they can't move, then they would have been found because they were sitting there at a monkey bridge for three days or four days, whatever the case may be. So if they were sitting there and they can't move, which makes also no sense because then why couldn't they not move if they're just, they found a monkey bridge. But besides that point, they would have been found because they were sitting at a monkey bridge for three days. So once again, the pictures and the storyline do not match. So even though I don't believe the girls got lost and perished in the jungle, I thought this information is still actually, is still very good to uh, still show you. And it's still very important for people who go hiking and still want to you know, travel around the world and still stay safe in the case they get lost. So I just thought this was kind of per pertinent information. So uh, thanks for watching. Congratulations if you made it all the way through the video. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.